Happy birthday to the crowd! I threw the rest of the cake too! Welcome to the real world, jackass! Cabinets of the speakers were made out of plywood since I did have some extra on hand. The plywood is a pretty nice material to use since it has a fairly consistent density. I wanted to do something a little different instead of just regular butt joints, so I beveled all the edges at 45 degrees. This had the added benefit of maximizing the contact area between the panels, which increased the strength after I glued everything together. Perhaps I'm getting a little too comfortable with the saw, since um, as you can see my fingers got pretty close to the saw blade. The only panel I didn't attach using bevel joints is the back panel, and that's to make it easy to add the components like the speaker drivers and the crossover board. I drew outlines of the holes that were meant to fit the speakers. This made it easy to cut them out using a router. The holes were a little rough, but the edges will eventually be covered by the tweeter plates and the woofer. I used a little masking tape to hold the boxes in shape while the glue dried.
I wanted access to the electronics in case I needed to fix something down the line, so I used multiple screws on each back panel. They'll keep the panel on tightly. After rounding over some of the edges, I gave the front face a couple coats of matte black paint. One of the greatest parts of spray painting is seeing that clean line after removing the tape. Each speaker driver requires a positive and a negative wire. I used a little solder for good contact. It smells wonderful as well. Make sure to get a strong hit of this good stuff. Same goes for the tweeters, a pair of speaker wires to solder on. I drilled a pair of holes in the back panel to pass the audio signal to the speaker components inside. These connectors are hardwired to the internals on the inside. They use banana connector ports on the outside so it's easy to unplug the speakers and move them around. I 3D printed these tweeter covers and installed them with a few screws in the front panel. After mounting the speaker drivers inside, I applied some silicone sealant around the drivers to prevent sound leakage. I then wired the speakers to the crossover board and attached it to the inside using hot glue. This board separates the sound frequencies between the two speaker drivers. This tape foam serves to seal the enclosure, but without glue. It allows me to remove the back panel if I ever need to. All these screws ensure that there is a good seal between the back panel and the main enclosure. I 3D printed a mounting mechanism that makes it easy to remove the speakers, and to tilt the speakers. It also is wall mounted using only a single screw. You'll see everything soon enough. This is what it'll look like when mounted. I'm using a clamp in place of the screw just for testing here. The tilt has a ratcheting mechanism that allows for a few different angles to be set. The speaker can be slid up and out in case something needs to be fixed.
Here are some 3D renders of the entire speaker, and some final pictures. I can't really show the audio quality, but it's decent compared to my Edifier bookshelf speakers I got off Amazon. They are lacking in bass, so I may build a subwoofer to compensate. This was a very interesting project that combined electrical and woodworking skills to complete. Next, I'll build speakers so loud that they'll blow a woman's clothes off.